Okay, Mr. Fisher, thank you so much for joining me today. Delighted to be here. Your main career was in the television business, screenwriting and producing? It was. It was. Why don't we start a little with that? Can you tell me some of that? Sure. I, um, I studied uh, writing and speech and, and, and drama at Johns Hopkins and uh, had in my mind that I was going to write or act or something. I went to Summerstock and found out I was not an actor, <laughs> decided I'd become a writer. and. Uh, when I got out of the army, I got married very early, and I had a uh, family to support. So I didn't really get to my writing in full time until I was in my mid thirties. And at that, that is, yeah, that yeah, is pretty old. 30, yeah, I was uh, thirty-five years old when I wrote uh, my first uh, script that was uh, that was shootable, and uh, it was called The Last Child. And uh, through a set of circumstances that involved my brother, who was a casting director at uh, Universal, uh, he got it to uh, a producer who got it to uh, Barry Diller, who was the head of the ABC Movies of the Week, and mm -hmm. uh, he got it to Aaron Spelling. Everybody knows who Aaron Spelling oh, yes. is. And uh, the next thing you know, they're making my movie, and I'm in the movie business. So <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah, that was a wonderful yeah. movie too. Yeah, it's it's and it's uh, strange because you know you don't get in the movies that way. This is that one in a million that you know you get very lucky. So. You got your shot. I was lucky. I got my shot. So. You created Murder, She Wrote with Richard Levinson and William Link. Can you tell me how that came about? Yes, we do. We do Murder, She Wrote. Uh, again, it was Dick and Bill and I, and uh, CBS wanted to do a murder mystery. They called Dick, uh, who was our, our ringleader, and said, uh, you know, we'd like to talk to you guys. And he said, okay, I'll bring the boys. So we went over there, and uh, he was trying to pitch a, a premise called uh, Black's Magic, which was uh, about a retired magician who solves... Uh, mysteries and he started talking about it and it became very apparent that they didn't want Black's Magic. They were looking for a, uh, a murder mystery with a female lead and they didn't specify whether old, young, they didn't really know but they thought maybe a female lead would be good. They thought they could get a female audience. Interesting. Don't ask. I don't do demographics. But right. So we said, oh, okay. So we were a little disappointed and uh, so we went off and we came up with the idea of uh, Murder, She Wrote, which was uh, basically uh, Agatha Christie and Miss Marple sort of welded into one character. and uh, Jessica Fletcher. So we had her, you know, being a writer who solved murders, and uh, and we thought it was a good premise. And so uh, we went back and told them about it. They loved it. Harvey Shepard, who was the president of, head of programming, actually, at CBS, loved it. And he said, go, go, you know. So uh, we the story, wrote a script, got it all set. He said, this is a go project, all we have to do, and this is simple, we the big. have to find the right actress to play Jessica Fletcher. I said, Not oh, so easy. Oh. So we had in mind uh, 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 Jean Stapleton, because we needed somebody who the audience would recognize. And she we, is from uh, All in the all Family. The family. And she's a wonderful actress. She's not the ditzy person that you see on All in the Family. She's, she's just a great actress. actress. So we met with her, and she had just lost her husband, and she was doing summer stock. She owned a theater that needed her attention, and when all was said and done, she decided that she didn't want to do it, and um, that was disappointing, and we were terribly afraid that, uh-oh, this project is going to go down the tubes because, you know, we need an actress. And just about that time, Angela Lansbury uh, had let it be known through her agent that she would consider doing a television series. So we sent her a script. Norman Lear had a comedy that he wanted to do with Charles Durning and Angela Lansbury, and he sent her a script, so she was reading both of them over the weekend, and uh, she she decided to do ours, thank you, and uh, oh yes, and from then on it was just uh, it was a wonderful it was show, a happy experience. It, most shows, when you work on them, they have problems. You know, there are major problems often. Uh, with Murder She Wrote, I don't think we had any. I think from day one, we just, it was smooth. The yeah. thing I remember mostly is um, guest stars. The guest stars, you yes. You had wonderful old Hollywood. Well, the thing about television is, and, and uh, movies, but television in particular, is that uh, when you're doing a mystery show like a Perry Mason, well, Perry Mason didn't use really big guest stars, but a lot of the imitators did. 
they would hire uh, a famous person, a well-known actor or actress from the television or movies, and, and then they would surround that person with five or six or seven good actors, but nobody knew who they were. Mm -hmm. And invariably, the star was the killer. Guess and what? Said, well, this is, this is silly. I mean, I'm looking at the, I'm saying, who's in the show tonight? Oh, my goodness gracious, <laughs> it's June Allison and eight, eight people I never heard of. So I think maybe June Allison is the killer. <laughs> So we decided when we did Ellery Queen in 1975 that we would not play that game. Mm -hmm. So in Ellery Queen, if you ever get a chance to watch it, it's in reruns or Wonderful in the DVD. Show. We do the same thing. We, we cast a lot of famous names in each episode. I remember one we did uh, had uh, Anne Francis, uh, Ida Lupino, Susan Strasberg, Donna Michi, Jack Kelly, Craig Stevens. This is one episode? Yeah, one episode. Yeah, wow. that was the second show on the year. And, and it was the same thing. You know, put all those people together. Now, I say, I defy you to tell yes. me which one of these people <laughs> is the killer. Well, you couldn't. So well, we did that in Ellery Queen, and then we, then we repeated the same thing for Murder, She Wrote. And uh, we had the added advantage of, although people loved to work with Jim Hutton, too, because he was such a nice fellow, but uh, the idea of working with Angela Lansbury of was course. a great attraction to a lot of people, and people who would not do television, episodic television. They'll come out of retirement to work with Angela Lansbury. People love so, to see them, too. I so think. we could get big guest stars, you know, who normally would not do television. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why we're successful. The big reason, of course, is Angela. But Absolutely. Nobody, nobody quarreled with that. <laughs> no doubt. And you won a couple of Golden Globes. Yes, we did. A couple of Golden Globes. Got nominated many times for uh, the Emmy. but uh, And wonderful ratings also. And oh, yeah. I decided at the end of, this, of the seventh year, I was not quite 60, but I thought, maybe I should retire. Maybe just, you know, pack it in. I got my kids grown and, uh, you know, I can enjoy myself. And so I decided that that's what I was going to do. And so I sort of, sort of retired when I was young. And spent years not writing? And spent many years not writing. And up until this time, pretty much not an author. No, no. no I, I tried to write a novel years ago. It was terrible. Because I was not used to the, I, I, I was not used to the, muscles that you had to use to write a novel. It's a different and ball game. Different ball game of what I was doing. Finally was working on scripts and, and dialogue and scenes and visuals and, and it, that's a whole different thing and not reading books so I didn't know what I was doing and so when it came to a script I felt comfortable. When it came to writing prose I was not. And then after I retired I started reading a lot and, and for whatever reason by osmosis the mechanics of writing prose sort of seeped into my brain and uh, I came to a point about three years ago where I had an idea for a, a book and uh, political thriller. Political thriller, and uh, I said, "Well, you know, I mean, I have nothing better to do. I think I'll sit down and see if I can write this." So I did, and it turned out to be. Well, most people who read it say it's terrific. So I I read it and wonderful, yeah, anyway, exciting. Yeah. Called the Blood of Tyrants. By the Blood of Tyrants, and uh, it's a. Uh, uh, this is a plug. It's for sale on Amazon. It so, is. <laughs> so, <laughs> Along with the, not a sequel, but a, a follow you followed up, that up. Follow up with The Terror of Tyrants, but, uh, which is also a good book, I think. Uh, but they're both thrillers, page turners, you know, whatever. And uh, So that proved to me that, gee, I can, I can write a book. And uh, Seems like you're having fun doing it, too. Yes, so that's what leads us to The Hollywood, the Hollywood Murder Mysteries. Correct. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, I just had this thought that, you know, today when you watch the news or you read the newspapers and even when you're watching television, things like CSI and Criminal Minds and... Uh, Which are all great shows. I guess, yeah, they are good shows. I enjoy them. I watch them. But they're, they're graphic. They're gory. Correct. They're, I don't know whether you'd call them family fair. The world, the world, or at least the, the world watching television has become inured to the violence and the gore and, and it's a different society than the one I was brought up in and I said gee I'd love to be able to write books about a gentler, gentler kinder time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I came up with two thoughts. One was to do a murder mystery, the old-fashioned kind of murder mystery where you have a, a bevy of suspects and you do an intricate plotting and you know this Those and are fun. red herrings here and you know and but keeping it going, keeping the storytelling going. 
and then putting it into an era that uh, most people of a certain age, and I would say over 50, maybe over 60, but in that broad area, uh, remember well, which is right after World War II and the Hollywood when the Tyrone Power and Gary Cooper and Clark Gable and all the, the big, big premieres stars, and the big stars were coming back from the war and then they were making the pictures, the studios were prospering. Mm -hmm. And it was just a kind, a kinder, gentler time. And I said, I'm going to marry these two. So I came up with uh, the idea of uh, a hero who, my, my protagonist, who was uh, not a lawyer, not a private detective, not a cop. He's a publicity guy. He's a press agent. He's a guy who works for a studio and publicizes their pictures. Interesting. Put him at the studio. And then in 1947, we do the first book with Joe, Joe Bernardi. And... Uh, it's a murder mystery. And, Called uh, Jezebel in Blue Satin. Jezebel in Blue Satin, and we do that one. And then the, the idea behind the murder mysteries is this, and that's 1947. The second book is 1948, a year later, and it takes place in Mexico, and, uh, where they're filming The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. And, Humphrey Bogart. And Humphrey Bogart and John Houston and uh, Walter Houston and Tim Holt and some others are characters in the book. I've, re I've read both books and it's fun It's fun that the, the real actors and yeah, stuff yeah. are in it. Um, yeah. I find it really, so really fun. So we've taken the celebrities, we've taken Hollywood, and we've taken the murder mystery, and we've welded them all together. And so that's the second book. The third book is called Love Has Nothing To Do With It, and it takes place in 1949. It's a year later. It takes place in Hollywood, and Joe is working hard on White Heat with Jimmy Cagney oh, and Evan O'Brien, and there's a murder mystery going on at the same time. We mesh the two storylines together, and uh, so that's what's going to be. It's going to be uh, 47, 48, 49, 1950, and so on. And we're going to go to 51 and 52. And as long as my fevered brain <laughs> can come up with decent storylines and decent plots, you know, and, and they're exciting and fun to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep going. So that's the. Uh, those are the Hollywood murder mysteries. And, uh, and you're doing them what they call self-published? Yes, self-published, uh, only because I can, can I can maintain control. Your imprint is called the Grove Point Press? Grove Point Press, and uh, I have a website, the Grove Point Press, and uh, we have, uh, you know, the books are for sale there, and they're described, and, uh, and uh, you can buy them uh, with autograph by me, and if you care to. I'm Seems to me you're having a lot of fun. I'm having fun. This is this is a hobby. Yes. <laughs> so I'm having fun doing it, and I'm doing it basically to keep my mind fresh and uh, have enjoy myself and fill the days. And uh, well, I've enjoyed the books. Yeah. They're they're really exciting, and it's fun to try to figure out, you know, yeah, yeah, who did it? Yeah, you know, who did it? Who done it? The references, uh, you know, well, to baseball of, teams. Uh, and, I do and, a lot of research. I try and make sure that I'm correct in everything I do. That this thing was invented by that time. That right. Not, you know. I find that stuff fun. And I have the right people, the right restaurants. The restaurants I've got to have been open by then. You know, I don't exactly. want to suddenly have somebody write to me and say, "You know that place didn't open until <laughs> three years, years later." Yeah, it's, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so they're 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 historically pretty accurate and. Uh, and as I said, fun to read. Yeah, right. uh, it's called the Hollywood Murder Mysteries. That's right. Uh, book one is called Jezebel in Blue Satin. Yep. Available at thegrovepointpress.com. Yes. Also Amazon. Yes. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And hopefully we'll sit down and chat somewhere down the road. I certainly hope so. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye bye.